How's it going everybody? This is Ray with Moss Pawn and Gun and Iraq Veteran 8888. And today we're going to be going over glass bedding. More of a 101 course. We're going to be using the Brownells kit. This is their master bedding kit, which comes with a wide variety of tools and accessories and consumables that you're going to need to do a classic quality bedding job. I'll go over a little bit of what's in the kit here with you starting with the actual box itself that you can carry every one of the components in. Nice uh, lockable, uh, closable box here. Um, it's going to come with mixing cups, masking tape, you got a bunch of mixing sticks and some brushes for putting on your release agent. There's also a plastilina which is used for filling up some of the gaps and such when you're, put, when you're bedding so that the glass doesn't seep in and create a, a lock. The um, Acra Quick, that's also used for doing some fill-in work here and there. Uh, same with the Acra 20. Uh, the Quick sets up in about five minutes to 20, 20 minutes, give or take. Uh, you got some swabs here that are also used for cleaning up the uh, action you want to uh, degrease everything before you put your release agent on there so that it sticks well. The uh, dyes that are in here allow you to do black and brown so you can match up your stocks pretty readily if you're doing a black fiberglass stock or if you just have a regular wood stock. That'll help blend it in quite a bit. The um, release agent comes in a liquid which you just paint onto the metal work everywhere and can't use too much of it but it gives you a nice color so that you know that it's actually on there. Uh, they also come in an aerosol, and this is a little more convenient. It's a bit more expensive though. The um, Acra glass itself comes in your bottles here of your hardener and your resin. Uh, you also have a big syringe that you can use for laying that out with when you get, get it all mixed up. Um, I've also got some steel bed here, which is going to be used today's project, uh, but it is considerably more robust when it comes to strength. It is very, very thick, so it does require a little bit more um, work getting it into the nooks and crannies, whereas the, the liquid resin will actually uh, lay into very small crevices quite nicely. Some people like to use a combination of the um, steel for the heaviest part of the bed and then if you've got any small voids left you can come back with the glass and fill it in and that way you get a real nice solid uh, bond on everything. The um, surgical tubing here is used to help hold the action to the wood once you get everything set in place. Um, we also have bedding sleeves these don't necessarily come in the kit, but they are nice because it allows your screws to really bite down pretty hard and get a good firm solid seat. So these are going to be fitted to each individual stock in each action. Uh, these are basic sets from, Bar from Brownells, but you can make your own, which we ended up actually doing for today's application. The, um, some of the other parts in the kit are just going to be some little pads that you can use to mix your fiberglass and your um, resins together. Um, the fiberglass flocking is used to mix with the liquid resins if you need something a little more firm that's not going to run as much. It gives it a little bit more body. It doesn't hurt with the uh, strength of it at all. So as, as the original lacquer glass came out, they needed something to add some body and that was it. Now that the steel bed and the acrid gel is out, those are also um, useful in uh, different bedding projects. The parts we made here were just some custom pillars. I just made those out of an old 22 rimfire barrel, turned them down to the correct sizes and dimensions that we needed. Because today we are going to be bedding a CZ-455. This particular rifle has an integrated suppressor from KG Made. Pretty cool stuff here. And to get the most accuracy out of it, we need to set this thing solidly in the stock. Uh, Chad chose to put a wooden stock on this particular gun. And because wood is compressible and it changes with humidity levels, it's not a bad idea to bed it. So we're going to get into the uh, dynamics of this here in just a moment. Well, guys, we're going to set the stock up here in the uh, drill press because we've got to bore the holes out a little bit larger for our pillars. 
Now these are interrupted cuts, so that's why I'm doing it here on the press. It really needs to be pretty rigid so that you don't chip out and you need to use a good sharp cutter for it. So I'm gonna clamp it up here. I've got my solid jaws and my padded jaws and we're gonna put a little paper in there just to cut down on any marring of the wood. That thing in there good and solid. And now on this particular CZ, the holes are perpendicular to the top of the stock. I checked that earlier. Not all stocks are that way, so don't assume that. What we're gonna do too is to use the, use an alignment pin here, or transfer punch. And we're gonna put that in our hole, like so. And then we're gonna bring our quill, or our table over to that. And we'll loosen it up here a bit. A bit. Rotate everything around. Right. And we'll use our X, Y axis to get everything a little closer. All right. Pretty nice and well centered there. So once we get that well centered, make sure that the um, stock's clamped firmly enough to where it's not going to move around. Make sure of your smoothness there. All right, get that out of here. I'm gonna change up to a cutter. Now this cutter is gonna be approximately 20% larger, give or take, than the pillar so that we can get acro glass around every edge of the pillar. The, um, the cutter itself, relatively sharp, it's meant for cutting wood and it will be suitable for what we've got here. You can also use an end mill if you've got that. But we're gonna cut all the way through this. And with cutting wood here, relatively high speed is gonna be used. nice got us a nice straight hole for our pillar on the front I'm just gonna slide the stock down a little ways and do the same setup again We've gotten the uh, stock set up already. We've bored our holes for our um, pillars. You can see that in our um, stock here, everything's ready to go. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna remove some of the components from the metal on the gun. That's, this will let us create a dam to put the, uh, the steel bed in place, and we can come back and fit this magazine well correctly to that and allow for the undercuts for the screws and such. It'll just make it a little bit easier overall than having to mask all of this stuff up and press it in there with all of that uh, glass in the way. So we're gonna pop this apart and then we're gonna get our putty and we're gonna fill in these couple of holes here where the takedown is for the gun. And uh, then we're gonna set up the pillars in the stock and glass them in place. I'm gonna push a little bit of these uh, plastic putty down in here just to keep these from locking into the Acro glass when we put it down. There we go. It's not particularly critical, just as long as you get enough in there where there's not a negative undercut on it. The stuff comes out relatively easy when you're done with it. Just pick it out with the toothpick and a little toothbrush, and it'll come right out. Had a little bit more fill in work to do on this receiver. It's got a little alignment groove on the bottom for the magazine assembly and uh, just want to make sure that we don't get any anything in there that would cause a, a lock. So just a little bit 
smearing some more of this stuff around and I'll be done here with that in a moment. So also on the stock we're going to fill in an area. Basically we're going to put a dam that fills in this area right about here and allows us to put the epoxy in this area with our pillar in place like so. So that'll be in here like that and then a small dam behind it and this void around it will be filled with epoxy. The same on the back side as well. So we're going to set that up now with the putty. All right, we've got a uh, good bit of the compound in there now. We're just going to kind of square it off a little bit, trim off some of the excess, make sure that it's sticking good to the wood. We don't want it to push out when we get ready to set the action down in there. I'm going to grab a little bench knife here and square up the inside. This will help to cut down on the trim work that you'll have to do if you get yourself a good sharp knife edge. When that epoxy dries, you won't have a lot of undercut and a lot of extra material here to try to dig out from underneath your glass. If you guys enjoy this and want to learn more about it, there's some uh, awesome courses that um, Snore and Desert Institute offers and uh, I can highly recommend them. I've looked over their coursework. I help them with um, some of the curriculum as well. So check them out. Uh, we've got a link down below and they can really, really put you on the right track to becoming a professional gunsmith. We're going to put in a dam for the barrel uh, basically, between the two dam points here that I've got set up, we're going to put some epoxy in here. That way the front portion of the barrel will also be bedded to some degree and offer some extra support. Especially on these rim fires, they, uh, they truly could use a little help when it comes to that. Alright, that one, those are set. And one more small one in the back. <coughs> So keep this stuff from oozing out too far. All right guys, we've got our liquid release agent. We're gonna brush that on all over the, all the metal areas here. That way we won't get anything locking us up. It will glue it down very solid if you don't use this. So just brush it on and you're going to have to let it set up and dry for a few minutes. It creates kind of a skin. But that's the reason they put it, put the blue dye in there so you can see it when you've got it on. All right, we've got our stock already laid in the vise here with our dams and everything set up. Uh, the steel, the action, the bottom metal has already been um, brushed down with the uh, release agent set aside. Right now we're going to mix up our steel. This stuff is going to be used because we want a good, rigid, very solid, non-compressible base for this gun to sit in. It allows you to really crank down the uh, guard screws on your weapon, especially if you've got a heavy recoiling gun although this 22 is not. I like the ability of this stuff to be put where you want it without it running everywhere. It, it cuts down a lot on the uh, um, overall masking that you have to do and it cleans up nice and quick and easy and just doesn't run everywhere. So we're going to be mixing this up. The, the hardener and the actual resin is going to be mixed half and half. So just take a glob of each, put it in your cup and mix it up real good. And uh, it's better sometimes to mix more than you need. You know, you can always find something to fix around the shop that's broken probably if you have any left over. But just uh, dig it out of here. Get yourself a good um, solid dose of this stuff. All 
and just kind of estimate if you take a look at the volume that you're going to need to fill inside the stock you can kind of guess how much you're going to need so that's about I figure that's probably going to be enough on that half we'll switch up here take the other half get that in there when you're doing this just make sure to switch ends on your stick because you don't really want to contaminate it if you put the uh, dark over in the lighter colored stuff it's going to harden up inside its container and um, that way you won't contaminate it and you'll have plenty of stuff to use for a while all right i've got a smaller mixing um, instrument that i like to use just mix it slowly you don't want to get a bunch of air bubbles in it you got plenty of time to work with this stuff it's not going to harden up in any quick amount of time you're going to want it to set up for at least 24 hours once you get this stuff mixed up and set in place but you do want to make it consistent so make sure you scrape along the edges of the cup and mix up any of it that's there because if you don't get it mixed it just will not set up and you'll have a mess on your hands doing bedding wrong or getting in a hurry is no fun to go back and clean up because you got to get in here and you've got to mill all of this stuff out and it's just a royal mess all right we got a nice color consistency throughout and this is ready to put down so we're going to start putting some of this on the wood and setting it in place where we need it. I would suggest having a roll of paper towels handy. If you don't like getting it on your hands, go ahead and get you some rubber gloves. But I find that for me, the rubber gloves tend to remove some of the feel that I'm trying to get. So I don't use them. I just wash my hands when I'm done. I'm gonna start by putting glass or steel bed in all of the areas that we want to set up here. So we're gonna roll some of this in and just kind of mash it against the wood so that it's got good contact. In the areas up here under the barrel, it's gonna be relatively thin, so there's not a, not a big reason for a whole bunch of it. It's just enough to coat the wood. On heavy recoilers, we would be cutting out the recoil lug area on this stock and making sure that there was enough material there to offer a solid lug arrangement. 22, doesn't really have one, it's using the screws as the recoil lug, so we're pretty, pretty well set there. Use your tool to mash this into all of the, the wood grain and then come back and fill in where you need extra material just so that it's got a good bite on the woodwork. There's definitely going to be some cleanup, so don't worry about a little bit of overage right now. You've got a good hour or two to clean this stuff up before it sets. Got our epoxy set up in the um, front, so we're going to move back here to the rear side of it and just fill in all these little void areas nice and good you can um, just dab it in there with whatever tool you got you can use the like a little shop knife bench knife is what i've got here that works well for me but toothpicks are good tongue depressors really doesn't matter it's whatever is the best for you at your shop you're working with an older stock, especially if it's got a lot of oil soak, you really want to do as much as you can to remove <clears throat> any of those oils and greases that may be in there. You can make up a paste using calcium carbonate powder form and some denatured alcohol. And what you'll do is make it into a, just a paste and pack it around the areas that have 
a lot of oil and grease soak as that alcohol flashes away it'll help to turn the um, thin out the grease and the oils and then the calcium carbonate will absorb it as the alcohol evaporates works quite well and it's uh, used um, a lot for doing just that so keep that in mind it's cheap you can buy it by the pound from Amazon eBay they've got it and it uh, goes a long way on this particular gun there's not a lot of not a lot of reason to really bed any areas besides the tang and the front area the the sides are relatively untouched the um, actual gun more or less just floats in the areas between the two ends of it where it bolts down the um, the pillars really give all the support that you need and once they're epoxied in place here uh, this gun's going to be just as solid as it can be the only thing you could do better would be to really make a stock out of solid aluminum all right we've got the action set in here now and i was going to now wrap it with some surgical tubing to hold it in place this will um, allow it to set up real well and we'll um, come back to it once it gets set up we're going to fill in the bottom so we're going to flip that over here and i'll show you how that looks so i've got the front wrap down pulled down pretty good uh, you can see the material oozing out where it needs to we'll come back in a few minutes and we'll scrape that away that way we won't have as much cleanup later on all right when we assembled this we had the pillars already attached to the bottom of the action and for one reason on the CZ it's got a flat for clearance for the magazine box screw didn't want that to rotate when I was trying to screw it together when we do this all of this will be held down firmly I'm going to put some more surgical tubing on this back half and <clears throat> once the epoxy sets up we're going to come back in with the bottom metal and it's going to be pull down really good and firm so we'll just go in if there's a little bit of inletting that needs to be done on that bottom metal we'll do it um, because that's not super critical as long as you've got the magazine box and everything going in and out like it should there's nothing else really to worry about so we've got all that done I'm going to flip it over and we're going to look at the how much material has come out as you can see we've got uh, still some void areas to fill in that's easy enough to do You're just going to take the material from the other that you mixed up here and just work it down in here the epoxy around the screws don't worry about that just make sure that it's down in the pockets real good filled in nice and the release agent will keep these screws from sticking so the rotational torque what little bit of epoxy will be in there will be easily overcome when you go to loosen it all up nice thin instrument like this is good for getting down in in these crevices again toothpicks are fine too and they're disposable you don't have to worry about cleanup just toss them as you go and this stuff does settle so it wouldn't hurt to look at it again in about 15 minutes or so if you need to add more just add a little bit more but it's not going to settle a great deal something that will help clean up as you're going along here when we're done laying all the material in place would be you know big roll of paper towels of course you can use a little bit of um, spray lube of your choice and that'll keep the material from sticking to the gun stock and allow for a nice clean removal of the material without compromising it and spray the lubricant on the rags not on the gun well, we've got our material fairly well set in there you can see that it's sinking a little bit and we're going to go back in and just dab a little bit more in there you can run it a little proud and that way it'll sink in place and you'll have plenty of material when we're all done with it 
yeah, the exciting part is yet to come. If you guys like watching paint dry, well, you're going to enjoy the rest of it. Because it's all about just patience and wait for it. Definitely don't want to break it loose too early. Don't get impatient with it because it does take this stuff a while to set. Even if the outside seems nice and solid, it's not all the way through. So just give it the time that they recommend, a good 24 hours generally. I'll finish up the project some point during the day and won't touch it again until at least that point the next day or even a couple of days later. This one we're doing on a Wednesday and we'll be back into it on a Friday. So it'll have plenty of time to set up. All right. So at this point, we've pretty much got all the epoxy in place that we're going to put in for now. And we're just going to let time do what it's going to do. All right, we're going to go ahead and um, clean up the top side a little bit. A little bit of, little bit of fill in along the barrel edge here. I didn't put quite enough material up front, but um, that's easy enough remedied. And like I said, sometimes when you do this, this material doesn't flow as well as say the liquid does, but I've used this and I've used the liquid a lot of different times and I really do prefer this because it gives you a much more solid, rigid, you know, setup here. If there are any voids under here when we get done, like I said, we'll go back with a little bit of liquid to fill it in, but it's not actually necessary, it's just going to be a matter of cosmetics on that. A lot of this compound that might be otherwise a little proud when it's up on the metal, not a big deal. You definitely want to get it off the wood, but if it runs up the metal just a little bit, don't worry about that because when you get done and you pull it out, you can take yourself a small file, a little bit of sandpaper and and break those edges over so that they don't chip out. And that's, uh, that's a good simple way to take care of that. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna take this paper towel and I'm gonna take a little bit of our preferred lubricant here. And give that a wipe. I'll do this a few swipes just to get this off of here and leave the wood nice and clean. There we go. I'm just wiping off the rest of this material off the back edges here. We're going to switch to the other side and get this stuff out of the way here. There we go. Wasn't really a whole lot of push out back here. Just enough though, exactly what you want. That is cleaning up super nice. Let's look up here at this front edge. Oh yeah, it's gonna work out nice. Got a little radius tool here that helps pick this stuff up. All right, all cleaned up and ready to let it set up for a little while. Well, all right, we're back here with the uh, CZ bedding job. We're about to pull it back apart. It's set up for two days now, and the um, epoxy is nice and well set. So we're gonna go ahead and unwrap it, break the screws loose a little bit, and then try to tap them and see if the action doesn't just drop out like it should. Well, we're going to break the screws loose now. They should come loose with the release agent that we put on them, but we'll put a good solid down force on them and just give them a good bit of torque. There we go. I'm not going to take them all the way out because we're going to use them to tap the action loose. There we go. All right. Grab my mallet. Right. 
do believe it's loose. Let's go ahead and take these out. Looks like they sit in there really nice. The epoxy filled in quite nicely in the uh, voids. Uh, one or two little bitty spots, but nothing of any consequence at the moment. So let's flip it over and see if it's going to release real well. All right, we're going to see if it'll lift right out of here. I think it will. Yep, perfect. There's the release agent did a good job here. There's no um, no epoxy stuck anywhere that it shouldn't be. We're going to look inside the stock here and we can see that the bedding filled in quite nicely. Got good solid area up here under the barrel, exactly what we wanted. Everything filled in real nice. We're going to come in with uh, the Dremel and just trim these edges up nice and clean. But uh, you can see where the putty helped us keep this exactly where we want it. Uh, you even see a real it's faint there, but there's a nice square parting line right there. That'll come off real clean, be enough. Uh, material there that we can cut away for the magazine and for the trigger assembly and get a good solid set. But uh, almost no voids. That's what you want. This is going to be a super solid arrangement. Uh, all we got to do is a little bit of cleanup. We're going to break out the Dremel and a couple of picks and get this uh, putty out of here and it'll be trimmed up shortly. Nice thing about this stuff is it comes off real easy. It doesn't stick to your finishes or anything. Just, uh, just get you a whatever you got on your bench that would be a nice little small scraper and scrape away most of this stuff. Because there's going to be some little bit of epoxy, you might not want to save the putty. I mean, it's cheap enough just to throw it away and get some more. That way you won't have <clears throat> chunks in, in the uh, putty next time you try to use it. But if you do it up nice and square like this, you can get most of it back out of there and make it reusable. All right, now we've got our stock apart from the action. Everything is all good to go with that. We took the action set aside now after we took all the putty and everything out. I'm just going to clean up some of these um, little edges and runs to make it just look a little bit better. Uh, some clearances here. I'm going to take it over to the um, XY axis in the uh, drill mill here shortly and do the bottom side for the trigger guard metal clearance. So let's trim this up a little bit here. We'll trim a little bit about out of the back here as well just to clear that up. Dress a little bit of this off here, smooth it out with a little sandpaper and a tongue depressor. Make it look a little more consistent. Try to get rid of the little sharp edges where the metal work transitions in and out. That way if you, you know, taking it in and out of the action, it doesn't chip the corners any. It doesn't take a lot, just a little bit of a chamfer. We're going to get in here and clean this up. Um, where we put the uh, dams in place and just kind of dress them where they look better. I'm just going to take in here with a little square file, dress this stuff out of here. Definitely not the most exciting work you'll ever do, but it certainly serves a purpose when it's done. You'll find that the gun's going to be a lot more consistently accurate not going to move around on you. That's what you're looking for. Doesn't matter if it's 22 or a 300 in Winchester or 338, just good solid bedding job will make a ton of difference overall. I'm going to dress the same area in the front where the magwell is. Now, I don't have the magwell in my hand right at the moment. Uh, I do need to reattach that to the receiver, but I know pretty close to where the clearances were. That's why I put the dam in the area that I did. There shouldn't be any big issue with clearance, but you can always move this a little farther forward if there is. 
So I'm just going to dress this up for cosmetics at the moment and then do a little bit more on the fitting once we get the um, action back. It's currently, currently in Cerakote. All right, we've got our stock set up in the mill drill setup. We're going to clean up this epoxy and just make it where the metal will sit back down into the original recesses and mortises there in the stock. So just take a few minutes to do that. We've got a quarter inch four fluid end mill in here and we'll be able to adjust our depth slightly with the quill here and we're going to run it on up to speed here. Now we've got our epoxy removed from the area all the way down just touching the top of the pillar. That way when we put our bottom metal on it will have a good solid point to rest against. We're going to come up to the front, do the same thing, and then basically we'll be able to reassemble it at that point. So we're just about done with all the fitting. All right, man, we've got our um, barreled action back from Cerakote and we're getting ready to drop it into the stock. We did just a minor amount more inletting where we had adjusted that pillar to fit where the magazine well and screw sits here. So basically we took and notched out slightly right here. That's really all it was necessary to get the action to drop into place. So we're going to go ahead and set that down in place now. All right. Squeeze it down a little bit. <clears throat> I'm going to tip it around the other direction and put our bottom metal in place. Nice and solid up against those pillars and she is good to go. So there we are. Look at the top, you can see the clean lines and everything where we trimmed it up. Nice good solid 22 right now. This thing's going to be super accurate. Folks, we appreciate you watching. Like I said, if you have any other interest in uh, learning this, check with uh, sdi.edu. They can uh, point you in the right direction. And of course, thanks to Brownells for helping us out with the uh, bedding compound and kit. You guys have a good day. Thanks for watching. <music>